Hey guys, Pastor Gaming right here, right now, bringing you another one of Papa Pass Lullabies. Today, we're gonna go over three costs. The first three costs is Akali. And Akali throws her kunai at her target, dealing magic damage. This is very simple. She does 175, 250, 400 magic damage. The thing you gotta know about Akali is that she's a ninja. So if she's there by herself, her attacks do 50 more damage and her spells get 50% spell amp. And if they're four ninjas, I think currently it's 125 or 130%. So th this goes up by a lot. And another thing is she's an assassin. So if you just add in one more assassin, her spells can crit. If you put an IE on her, then her spells are guaranteed to crit. That's why Akali 3-star is still a legitimate carry. She needs quite specific items. I would say like I RFC IE plus one, like a, like a Hodge, Hextech, QSS, GA, something like the third item is, is more flexible. But I would say that RFC is extremely important on her as well as IE. Reasons being that uh, if she has RFC, she doesn't have to walk around because like she has no, no attack range, right? one attack range so she would have to walk around and to cast her her ultimate which like it doesn't have, need any mana i mean obviously blue buff is still okay but i i would say that now because she attacks all the really quickly and the rfc gives her more attack speed so she would just cast very fast anyway even without blue buff so she's really powerful that's why i think she's worth three starring and she needs uh well she doesn't need ninjas but she's a lot better with with ninjas she definitely needs an assassin and yeah you can have fun going to town on your opponent's backline Darius. Darius the Dunk Master is back. Darius dunks an enemy, dealing magic damage. While dunking, Darius is unstoppable. If, th if this kills the target, Darius immediately casts again, dealing 25% reduced damage. So if you have a bunch of rods, if you find an early Darius, welcome to the slam. Like 550, that's, that's 800, so two star Darius with, with some rods, like death cap, that's 80%. At 640, that's 1400 damage. Uh, yeah, 1400 damage. Maybe add an Ionic Spark or add a, add a Hodge or something insane like that. And he will go to town. He is literally the, the devil. He does so, so, so much. So if you, if you find a Darius, if you... I mean, Slayers don't really do much for him. He's good with Fortune. Like, I'd say he's, he's really good on Stage 2. You can play him on Stage 3. But then he just falls off. Like as soon as people have mystics, and unless you unless you three star him, which I don't think is worth it. Like Darius is, is just there as a as a fun fortune synergy bot. I really now I really I gave two stars because she's adept, divine and enlightened. She's like her synergies are so 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 powerful, uh, just like Pike. Uh, I really launches a storm of blades in front of her, dealing magic damage and disarming enemies for a few seconds. Okay, so her, her ability is kind of okay. It's, it's a disarm. It's still not as powerful as Rakan, if you remember from, from the last video. And the, like, the damage is, is relatively, relatively low. Um, so you typically never want to bother three-starring her. Like the damage is not that amazing. Like it doesn't scale that high. The disarm doesn't go that high. She gets a bit of HP, obviously, a bit, bit of physical damage, like yeah. So, but like th she's like the perfect two-star synergy bot because she's great with Enlightened Talon. She's great with Kale. She's great to, because she provides Adepts with uh, Shen and Yone. So really, like, you can fit her in almost any comp, like Executioners or Enlightened, or, um, yeah, almost, almost any comp that needs Frontline can use a Shen and Irelia, and they'll do relatively well. Kalista. Kalista got, got reworked. She got several buffs. She got more HP. Uh, her attack speed went down, then it went back up. And uh, now that her, her spears work the way they're supposed to, the only thing that doesn't work on her right now, as far as I know, is Jeweled Gauntlet. But every other item like uh, Death Cap works, Hodge works, Giant Slayer works, all these things work with her ultimate, or rather her passive. Her passive is Kalista Spears, who made in her target. Each one capable of dealing a percentage of the target's maximum health and magic damage when removed. She removes the spears when, when doing so would kill the target. 
and they do four, six, and nine percent. So obviously there's like magic damage reductions. So let's say that this is like three, five. This is not five, like a little bit less than five. <coughs> and this could be somewhere around seven. So uh, uh, let's just say that this is four, right? So if there are 10 spears in, in a target, uh, that's 40% HP. So if the, if the target is at 40% HP, she'll pull out the spears and, and kill uh, kill the target. Obviously, if she has like a hodge and she rolls damage hodge, that will be not 40, but 60. Or it's not, it's not uh, 40, uh, yeah, like close to 60. Close to 60, 60% damage with, with 10 spears. Um, I think she's okay with cultist she's not that great like if you have uh, two duelists she does a lot of damage right if you two star her if you have two duelists and cultist she does she does reasonably well where she shines is in uh duelist comp if you run four or even six but four is typically enough but you, you can get away with six like if you have yasuo fiora Callista, Jax, Lee Sin. yeah there's lots of there's lots of good duelists right that that six yasuo fiora Callista, Jax, Lee Sin, that's five plus for the plus uh, chosen. Yeah, that, that's six duelists. And she's really good. Like, the reason she's so good in duelists is because all the duelists, apart from her, are, are frontline duelists, right? So she's like the backline DPS carry. So you have, like, Yasuo, who's uh, physical damage, and he's in the front. And then you have Callista, who's magical, kind of magical damage, and she's in the back. So there's, like, not that much of a cluster because, like, all your all units are essentially frontline. Apart from like support units like like Janna, uh, Shen and Aurelia are also frontline. So there's like Janna, Kalista in the back, and then like all the dudes in the front. So Kalista is really powerful in that role of uh, of a ranged duelist carry, and she can also carry cultists through the mid game, not not the late game, but through the mid game. Katarina, Katarina is by far the strongest uh, three cost when she's three starred, right? Because her ultimate. Channels for 2.5 seconds, throwing knives at enemies, dealing magic damage over duration, and reducing healing by 50% to her targets for 5 seconds. Right? Yeah, that doesn't matter. Uh, the, the thing you need to know is, like, if you look at the damage, it goes from 600 to 900 to 1650. It's pretty insane. And she's a warlord, right? So if you play her with warlords, which you almost always do, you can play her with keepers as well. To provide her with insane shielding so if she has an insane insane shield she will definitely cast and she will die but warlords kind of does the same thing like warlords give her gives her extra hp which is kind of like a shield and on top of that they give her extra magic damage so then her, her damage becomes even higher uh something to note number of targets I, I don't think this is ever an issue like when she jumps to the back line at one star that that would be more than four units in the back and then there's six units when she's two star. I don't think there's a problem that there will be more than six units around her. But that's just something that's just something I re I read a while ago and I realized okay, it might actually make a difference. Like if you're running a against someone who has like uh, Azir soldiers and a target dummy and more stuff, she only targets a certain amount of of units, right? So just keep that in mind. Um, her item, like what she what she needs, like she has very specific items. Uh, Hextech Gunblade is really, really good on her, so she heals back up to full. Uh, QSS is also quite necessary, so she doesn't die. And then, like, Titans to give her even more insane damage, give her some tankiness, uh, potentially, like, a Hodge to give her a little bit of mana, uh, even more healing or, or more damage. But I'd, I'd say that uh, Hextech is really powerful on her, QSS is really powerful, or maybe QSS, Hodge, Hodge, or something like that, but, like, uh, and the Titans, like, she, she needs specific items, a relatively specific comp, and also uh, she needs your opponents not to position that well. Because, like, if they position well and they just, like, put some tanks in the back or some, some damage that can actually kill her, like, like, Nunu can just eat her, right? So she's really powerful. Uh, just be careful about your positioning. And when someone is playing her, try to position, like, don't clump up in the back. Like, don't have everything in the, on the right or on the left. Like, have like some units on the left back, right back, and maybe some like one tank in, in the middle back. So like you can catch her and she, she doesn't like, she won't just spin to win and kill everything in the back. She'll either kill like one half of your carries or the other half of your carries, but not just everything. So like she's really good when people clump up. So like Elderwood comps, stuff like that, with keeper comps, cultist comps. She will just like, if she jumps in, 
she doesn't get killed, if she can't get CC because she has a QSS, she will just spin and delete the whole team. And at three stars, she's really, really good. That's why I put the three stars here. So yeah, if, if you can get a if you can get a two star Katarina like in the mid game and three star her late game, she'll typically get you a first or a second place. So not bad, not bad for a three cost. Cannon. Now Cannon, I didn't put the three stars next to. He's not like the best carry because he's like weird to fit in. Like he's a keeper and a ninja, so like. Yeah, if you're running keepers, you can play him. If you're running ninjas, like full, like full ninjas, you have to play him. Uh, so I'm going to read the ability, of course. Cannon summons a storm around himself for three seconds, calling down lightning bolts on all enemies in the area every 0.5 seconds and dealing magic damage over the duration. Each enemy struck by three lightning bolts is stunned for 1.5 seconds. So the way it works is uh, he needs, like, like, he can stun people uh he, he's gonna proc like six times so if they're there for for three of the times they get stunned it's just it's just nice that there's a stun uh, what you care about is the total damage obviously this damage again is is a lot lower than it is because by being a ninja the damage goes up as as he gets uh more ability power if he has four ninjas it goes even even higher uh something to note is uh like the, the scaling from this from 450 to 1200 like 1200 even if, if he even if he's the sole ninja with the 50%, it's like 1,800 damage, right? If you have any sort of... Um, I mean, he, he's really good with GA because he'll typically cast before he goes into his, like, revive state and he does a lot of damage while he's reviving. And, yeah, if, if you have, like, uh, some sort of more magic damage on him... The, the, the thing is, he's, he's really tricky because he's, he's ranged, right? He has, he has a bunch of range, so... Like he, he doesn't kill carries that well. He only he's great at killing frontline because like frontline will come up to him and he'll he'll go into his ultimate and kill them. As for backline, like he needs to walk all the way to the back. Like typically his ultimate does not reach the backline because because uh, range carries just outrange him. But he's also ranged, so he doesn't walk up to them. So yeah, that's something to keep in mind. But like uh, an assassin's bat on him or like if you three star him. Um, he will just melt everything around him. That that that's just something you should know. Uh, so like it is something to consider if you if you get like a chosen cannon at some point. Uh, he's always a chosen keeper, by the way. Always a chosen. You can't get a chosen ninja. He's always a chosen keeper. So yeah, he he he's quite powerful. He's quite powerful. Uh, he's good in good with keepers. Like if you're running a keeper comp, uh, he's one of the ninja, so he has to be running the ninja comp. And he's nothing nothing to scoff at. Like two star cannon in the mid game. Really powerful unit. <laughs> Three star cannon in the late game. If you get him, uh, he typically isn't worth rerolling for, like for Katarina, but he will definitely do a lot of damage and uh, he can net you a lot of wins until people out outscale, like out outplay you with like range carries and different si different sides of the board. And yeah, his ultimate just isn't isn't a complete AOE. Obviously, like four or five costs. So um, yeah, next next unit Kindred. Kindred, uh, Wolf Maul's Kindred's target, dealing magic damage and reducing their healing by 50% for 5 seconds. Meanwhile, Lamb leaps away from Kindred's target. So I don't really understand what this means. It's some sort of lol, lefren, uh, lol reference. But apparently, like, the Kindred is, is the Lamb and, and the Wolf. Like, the way it works is when she ultimates, she sends something out that's the wolf doing damage and the, the 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 main champion jumps back so that's kind of that's kind of what happens if you corner her like there's some weird positioning like if you put her in a corner <clears throat> it says jumps back but since she's in a corner she cannot jump back so she will jump like sideways or forward so i've had i've had some some positioning issues with her cuz um, yeah she she just like jump around the board and she can get into some weird positions um, they, they nerfed her a little bit because she was doing way too much. Uh, I think she's still very, very good. Because, uh, like, her, her ultimate doesn't cost a lot of mana, so she will cast a lot. And she's very, very good at taking out single target, right? She'll just eat one unit. Uh, at one star, like, if you have her on stage two, one star, really good. Stage three, two star, really good. Uh, stage four, two star, kind of falls off. Maybe, maybe three star is decent. But the thing is, why she isn't that amazing, like, if you compare to Katarina... 
I said it's single target. So she will like blow up units. Maybe, maybe she needs like two of these ultimates on, on the tanks. She will blow them up, but it's like one by one by one. So that, that's why she isn't that amazing later on because uh, units with like AOE abilities like Kennen, Kennen can blow up Kindred like if he gets close to her and like another three, four units. While Kindred will just like try to like blow up Kennen slowly and then like blow up another unit slowly. So she's really, really powerful early, like stage two, stage three, maybe a bit of stage four. Uh, but even if you three star her, she like cannot carry you too hard without decent front line because she's single target. Obviously, she's a great synergy bot for Spirit. Uh, she's also an executioner, so she's a great synergy bot for executioner. So just like she was like one of the best uh, hunters because she was a Spirit hunter, she's one of the best executioners because she's a Spirit executioner. So she provides she provides a lot for your team. Like with with one more Spirit, typically Yumi, uh, who's a Mystic. Like if you pair them together, and an executioner if you're running uh, Zaya or Kale, it's really really powerful. Uh, she's really good mid game. So like she opens up. Uh, like in the mid game, you just have Spirit because they're super powerful, as I mentioned several times before. And in the late game, she can open up Executioner, or you can like uh, pivot her, like pivot her items. And the reason like, like she's so useful is because she can do, like she does decent DPS, so she can use like damage items for like physical carries, but she also has a great spell. So she can do things with like, she can have like a death cap, right? So that it, it scales based on uh, her, her spell and she can have like a death blade so she'll do more dps so it's like that's that's one of the great things about her like she can use either of those items and then if you have like death cap and and jewel gauntlet you're more likely to go asol if you have death blade and uh, ie you're more likely to go some sort of carry with with talon or with olaf nico nico's one of the new units uh, she's she's different ability. She has the same ability as in set two, different ability than in set three. Uh, I, I think she is worth three starring. Uh, I'll read the ability. Obviously, Nico throws a seed at a random target that explodes for magic damage three times. Each explosion affects a bigger area than the last. Fable bonus: the third explosion is empowered, dealing three hundred damage instead. Now that that is just wrong. Um, like the third. The third explosion just does more damage. It doesn't do 300. Obviously, it would be a nerf, a three star. It might do like 300 bonus damage. It, it I think it does some sort. Of, it's like there's some sort of AP scaling. Like it does, uh, like instead of yeah, it does like 150, 150, and then like maybe like a bonus. I think it's not 300. It might be 300 at, at one star. It might be just double at one star, and then like double at a two star, and then it's it doesn't double at three star, but like it does a, it does more than 300. So it's really, like, she's really, really good in a Mystic comp, like Vanguard Mystic with Fable. I, I've tried that, like, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I three-star the Nautilus, then I three-star, I don't think I three-star Nico. maybe I did three-star Nico. like, she does immense damage, immense damage. She's essentially your Ari, except that she's not good enough at two-star. You need to three-star her, or, like, two-star if she has a lot of damage, like, Jeweled Gauntlet, Jeweled Gauntlet, Death Cap, she might be good enough with Fabled. Um... But what she provides is, is Mystic. So if you have Mystic Vanguard, she is really, really good. Um, she's like like Cassiopeia used to be in set 3. She's a damage Mystic. Apart from, I think, yeah, all other Mystics. Right, yeah, all other Mystics are utility. Like Janna, great utility. Uh, Yumi, great utility. Zillion, great utility. Shen is kind of a frontline Mystic. Nico is a damage Mystic. So, like, the thing about Nico is... You want her if you need damage. So she's great with Vanguard Mystic for that particular reason. But she's also like terrible in every other comp because you'd much rather have a Janna or a Yumi or possibly a Shen to just, just like have more frontline or Zillion to revive, right? So Nico is a unit you want to run in a spe in the specific Vanguard comp with uh, Mystics and with Fabled to do damage. But otherwise, you want to steer clear from her and just play the other four Mystics if you need four Mystic or other two Mystics, rather than Nico. Of course, you can run her for, for Mystic at some point in the game, but later on, you just don't want to play her for, for her tag because she doesn't provide anything uh, apart from the Mystic tag. Like, most compositions are going to have different carries and, and are going to have items for Nico. And if you are playing for, for items on Nico, 
uh, then it's then the good thing is she's easy to three star because uh, as I mentioned she's uh, not a utility mystic so nobody else will want to pick her up so it's like kind of like you don't want to play her unless you're playing her comp now, if you are playing her comp you want to three star her and she's relatively easy to three star because nobody else in their right mind is going to play her because she doesn't provide anything if they're not playing the comp and if they are playing the comp then obviously you're going to scout that out and I would not play uh, I would not try to three star Nico if someone else is going for three star Nico uh, the comp itself is not that powerful like you need some some quite specific items you just need like tank items for your front line for your nautilus and um, you need magic damage items for nico and then obviously like the fable bonus is really good because nico does does more damage her third um, uh, her third explosion is empowered dealing more damage not 300 it scales based on her level and uh, Cho'Gath just cc's the whole board Nautilus doesn't die. It, it's, it's a decent comp. I think it's a, it, it can get you to top four. It can get you to top four. It, it's, it's a fun comp. It's uh, for those of you who liked Ari. This is the new Ari. Nunu. Uh, Nunu uh, bites his target, dealing magic damage. If, okay, Willops, whatever. If Nunu's target has less health than he does before the bite, it deals an additional 50% damage and becomes true damage. Okay, so it deals 50% bonus damage. So, at three star, right, it's 1800 plus 50 percent, so that's <laughs> two seven, and it's also true, it's also true damage. So at three star, Nunu just eats everything, right? It just you, it'll just go around eating every single unit. Uh, at two star, it's like he's he's a uh, Elderwood brawler, so he's he's good, he's good uh, with Elderwoods, obviously, or well, it or whatever it's called. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with he. Uh, with, with Elderwood, like uh, Maokai and Nunu, plus one is really, really good. Really good front line. Uh, and Brawler, obviously. So Maokai, like, double synergy with, with Maokai. So you just, you just need one Elderwood. Really, really powerful early if you get a, if you get a Nunu from an orb on stage uh, one. Or, like, yeah, if you go to stage one. Or on stage two if you, if you level up or pre-level. If you find a Nunu, a really, really good early. Uh, DPS, Brawler, sort of, like, some DPS, so you don't want to use Nunu as a tank because uh, Nunu can go around eating eating things. Um, again, I didn't put the three stars here because I don't think you should aim for three star Nunu unless you have good items, which would be like Hextech. I, I go with like Hextech, Bramble D Claw, something like that for Nunu. Like if you do get those items, then the Nunu is insane. But again, it's single target damage, right? It's single target damage, which we discussed with Kindred. Yes, it's even higher than Kindred's damage, but it's also a frontline unit, a melee unit. So Nunu can die. Like Nunu can easily get bursted. So like if you're if you're going for a three-star Nunu and you go up against like a like a Kale or Zaya or an Olaf or Puff the Magic Dragon, like they'll just burst Nunu and that's it. So that that's why like uh, really good at three star. Uh, good with like tank items, maybe plus like one healing item, either Hodge or Hextech. Like, yeah, but again, not not a not the ideal carry. Shivana, Shivana on the other hand seems like an insane carry. Even though it's it's a single target, she's just too powerful. Shivana dashes away from her current target and transforms into dragon form. While in dragon form, Shivana gains bonus health, bonus attack damage, and her basic attacks become range attacks that deal bonus magic damage over two seconds on hit. Now, this doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm gonna, the way I'm gonna read this is, gains bonus health, I'm gonna guess that this is a bonus health, right? 40%, 45%, 50%. She's a brawler, by the way, so, like, she's gonna have 1350, plus, let's say, 700 from the brawler, so that's already 2k, right? Uh, she's gonna have extra damage from, from, the brawl, from the brawler buff, if you have if you have uh, four of them, I believe it's it's 30 right now. Might, might be wrong, but like she'll have extra damage. She'll get more attack damage in dragon form, right? And she gets uh, more like magic damage in her ranged form. I think this is the magic damage over two seconds. So that's a, a lot of damage. She is melee, but then, then she gets ranged. So I think something like um, Rage Blade... Is really good on her. Like I think, like she's she's essentially like I said, like if you have uh, sorry R R RFC not Rage Blade. If you have you want RFC, you want Runans, you want her to to jump back and to just clean up. 
And with Runan, she can attack multiple targets. And uh, I, th I think she's really, really powerful. Uh, even though, like as I mentioned before, single target is, is bad, the fact that she's ranged, like Kindred, uh, and the fact that she has insane amounts of HP compared to Kindred, uh, the fact that she has uh, additional damage from the Brawl buff and additional HP from the Brawl buff, and she has great frontline from the Brawlers, I think she can carry. If you 3-star her, uh, I don't think you're getting anything worse than, uh, than top 2. Uh, definitely top 4 guaranteed at 3-star. She gains an immense uh, magic damage, physical damage, even more. Like, the HP scaling is completely insane. That's why it's like 40, 40, 45. Uh, 40, 45, 50. Because she has like 2k, 2.4k, with some brawlers that gives her even more HP. And then the bonus health, like, she'll, she'll just jump back and get like 4 or 5k HP. And be unkillable. Essentially unkillable if you have like... Uh, and she has magic resistance that's really high as well. So she can't get burst by magic. Uh, then like armor obviously don't have you can't give her armor uh, if you if you if you have like good items on her uh, like I mentioned the, the RFC she'll just jump away and just go to town uh, Dragon Soul is also really powerful on her because um, if you have some sort of like if you want to give her bows to give her base like she already has decent enough attack speed you give her bow she gets more attack speed uh, and if, if you have, uh, as I mentioned, like a Rage Blade, RFC, stuff like that, it, it'll increase the attack speed more. You just want like three Dragon Souls. The Dragon Soul buff is going to mean that she attacks even faster. Uh, she doesn't really use the, the AP scaling. I mean, she could use it before she ultimates, which would, which would, which would just give her, give her more, more of these stats. But then her, when she's in her ultimate form, she doesn't really need more, more AP. And yeah, I, I think I think she's very very powerful. Uh, if you get a chosen Shivana, definitely three star her. If you're running any sort of brawler comp, you definitely want to have have two star three star uh, two star Shivana. Sorry, two star Shivana. Uh, she's she's just so 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 powerful. The the only issue I have as when as I clicked, uh, Shivana and Sivir, they look very similar, so I get them confused. So just get get used to the models. Because sometimes I pick up, I pick her up from the carousel, thinking I'm going to two star Sivir or two star Shivana, and it's, it's the other unit. So that's just a little little tidbit. Uh, just get used to how the units look. Uh, Sivir. Sivir rallies her uh, her allies within two hexes, granting them attack speed for five seconds. Sivir gains bonus attack damage for the duration. So Sivir is um, essentially a Zeke's, a little bit stronger than a Zeke's. She's a little bit stronger than a Zeke's. Uh, is that worth it for your whole team? I, I would say so in, in certain comps. She's obviously great with cultists. Like super, super good with cultists because they're all kind of like clumped up because of the keeper. So they're all clumped up and she'll ultimate and everyone's going to go to go to town. Uh, and sharpshooters, obviously sharpshooters, they're also like typically clumped up. And then she buffs everyone and she does a little bit extra damage. I don't think she's a carry in her own right. Even though her, she gets more attack damage and more attack speed, she's kind of not tanky enough. Like, you could try to three-star her and get some comp going, maybe with like a Deathblade, Deathblade, RFC, Runan, something like that. I've seen some people try it. I don't think she's survivable enough. You might need you might need a GA on her, QSS on her, something, or some sort of healing, like a like a BT or a Hodge on her. There's room room to test that. Obviously, five seconds is a long, long time in the late game. Uh, the, the thing is, like, it takes a long time for her to ramp up to 70 mana to cast. So she needs to survive. Like, that's another thing. She needs to survive until she has enough mana to cast. Then, in those five seconds, she needs to kill the whole enemy team. So it's like there's a window for, for, for your opponent to kill her before she casts. Then she becomes into, like, this, this turbo sniper. And then after the five seconds, she's no longer sniping everything, and she can die again. So, I mean, she can die during during the attack speed buff, but obviously she's going to be killing everything. After it, after after uh, the five seconds, she's going to be relatively weak because she loses all her damage and a lot of attack speed. So I'd say great, great synergy bot. Uh, I, I like playing her with Samira for, for Sharpshooter and to buff, to, to buff Samira, to buff your comp. So she's like a, a great unit you can just put in uh, if you have uh, a lot of frontline damage, you can just sprinkle her, sprinkle her in. I, I'd say like a, a lot of tanks. So maybe with like a Vanguard comp, you could kind of play her. Brawler comp, since brawlers get uh, attack damage as, as their trait, not just HP, but attack damage as well. 
I would I would consider running a Sivir just to, to buff their attack speed. So she's she's good if if you have room for an extra unit, if you don't need Mystic or if you already have two Mystic or or like for some reason you don't need it at all, she's just a, a good unit to buff your whole team. And she's she she's not like a synergy like she doesn't need any synergy. That's what that's what I mean. Like most units like like Siphoner, you need two Mystic, you need two Sivir. You just need one Sivir, and she she gives like a a Zeke's and a half to to whoever's close to her. So she's worth playing. And we have Vygar. Vygar blasts the enemy with the lowest health, dealing magic damage. Uh, if the if this kills the target, Vygar from the game is spell power. So it, they, they reduced it so many times. Now it's 112. It used to be like 123, 124. It used to be completely bonkers. So now it's 112. Uh, Vygar is super strong if you get him early enough. Like the earlier you get Vygar, the earlier you can play Vygar. He's gonna stack like crazy. So if you if you can play him on, on creep rounds, obviously the first stage one, like you can get him from an orb and he can kill some creeps. Then on stage two, he's gonna be killing opponents. Stage two creeps, like you, you want him to just farm champions, farm creeps. And yeah, he's, he's gonna go, he's gonna get more and more spell power. So he's gonna do more and more damage. Uh, I think he, he's relatively balanced now. Like even at three stars, like six to 900 is not a great increase compared to like uh, Kenny, Akali, um, Katarina. So it's it balanced. Uh, he also got a mana nerf. He got a little bit of an attack speed buff. So I think he's relatively balanced. He's good. He's good, obviously, in the Elderwood comp. He can he can be the carry for Elderwood if you if you three star him. If you find a chosen Vigar and you can three star him, he's he's really powerful. Otherwise, you just have him have a have a Vigar and a Lulu for Elderwood, right? Because they, they work so well together, and you have Puff the Magic Dragon, Asol to do all your damage. Um, Elderwood, like the the thing is like as you saw before, like Elderwood is really it's really powerful now because like all the all the synergies stack up. Like you have Elderwood, Elderwood, Brawler, Brawler. You have Elderwood, Elderwood, Mage, Mage. And then you have Elderwood, Elderwood, uh, Keeper, Keeper. So it's like two of each. And then you have uh, the only other Elderwood is Orn. Yeah. So Elderwood is like really good because it's super easy to have two Brawlers, two Keepers, or like get a third Mage. So yeah, that's why Elderwood is so powerful. So they also they also nerfed Elderwood a little bit. I'll get into that when, we, when we're discussing uh, origins and classes. And yeah, so for mages, you just you just have uh, Lulu with him, and then plus one. Um, a good a good tank for him would be Annie, and Annie can be three star. Vega can be three star. You're just rerolling for Vigar, Annie, Lulu, and you have a very very like mid game oriented comp that can scale well to late game. If you're just rolling on seven, potentially you can just roll on seven, three star all of that, and uh, get an easy top four, maybe even a top two. Yumi, the last three cost. Yumi dashes to the lowest health ally, healing them for a percentage of their missing health and granting them attack speed for 5 seconds. She then repeats this on, a, on the farthest ally. So, just, just so you guys know what this means. Um, the way you position when you have Yumi is you want your frontline unit to take damage, right? And you want your carry uh, to be opposite of that frontline unit. So if your frontline unit is, is like towards the front right, you want your carry to be in the back left. If you're running some sort of like Zed or uh, Assassin comp like with Diana, you want your front line to be on the left and you want Diana to jump to the far to the far right so that when, when Diana jumps like up here and your, your tank is here, Yumi will go heal your tank and then the farthest ally will be your, your Zed or your Diana or uh, whatever, your, your Sivir uh, or your Kindred or your uh, Kale. Right, so you need to position like Yumi positioning typically is like second, third, fourth row, it's not that big of a deal. But you need to position the rest of your comp so that Yumi uh, will jump to the far, like will, will jump to uh, a useful ally that's the farthest ally. Um, also, thing to note about Yumi as opposed to from Janna Janna just gives health and attack damage, Yumi does healing, and it's a healing percentage. Right, healing for the percentage of their missing health. Percentage of their missing health. That's that's also important. I thought it was total health, so missing health. So if you're running brawlers, like we looked at Shivana, and somehow you have her at 4k HP, uh, and your opponents get her down to 2k HP, Yumi's gonna heal her for let's say let's say this is 50, heal her for 1k HP, right? 
Uh, if she's down to like 500, Yumi will heal her for more than 1500 HP. Uh, so it's it's missing HP, missing health. So if if your if your uh, front line is at like 80 90 percent health, she's not going to do much. If they're down to like 10 20 percent, she's going to do a lot. The the damage is really good, the damage buff, and yeah, it just it just I, I think she's one of the best best uh, supports to go with with brawlers. Like until you have your your Shivana carry up and running. You can just run uh, Kindred and Yumi with your Brawlers for damage, for Spirit, so your Brawlers attack faster, which is really good because Brawlers need to attack faster because they like they have relatively slow attacks, but they have they have uh, the added added attack damage. Yumi will heal them. Yumi will give them attack speed. Kindred will, will be able to kill things when there's a lot of tanks in front of her, and the Spirit bonus is going to make everyone attack faster. So I, I think it's like Yumi is really good in in certain comps. Uh, obviously, she's she's played a lot in the executioner comp uh, because she can if you position correctly she can buff kale and the spirit buff is really important for kale so and also also she's good in in any other spirit comp as like so like she's really good uh utility as a mystic and as a spirit so you can easily have two mystic two spirits um i don't think she's that great in the late game unless you need four mystic or unless you're running some comp with kindred because uh, you don't really want to run spirit in the late game and as a mystic, she's okay, but in in the, in the late late game, usually there's a lot more burst, so her her kind of sustained healing doesn't matter that much. But from like the early mid early game, mid game, like mid late game, just not end game, she's really really good. So, thank you guys for watching, and when you wake up, you'll be in master.